good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wind Power 2016. It is spectacular to have each and every one of you here. With more attendees, more exhibitors, more exhibit space, more educational programs, we've got great momentum here at Wind Power. And more importantly, we have great momentum throughout the wind industry. How we got that momentum and how we are going to keep it is what I want to talk about this morning. Last year from this stage in Orlando, I did talk about wind vision. That's that vision for growing this industry from 2015 to 2020 by eight gigawatts a year that would allow us to grow from 5% to 10% of US generation and then to double again between 2020 and 2030. I'm very pleased to report that based on the work that we did back in 2015, we are on track, if not going to exceed, that vision for the next five years of doing eight gigawatts a year up to 2020. That is, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say that is an extraordinary accomplishment for this industry. Moving beyond the boom bust cycles, we now have a confident five year trajectory of a strong market to 2020. And to put that in a larger national and international context, we are now not just part of, we are leading the transformation of the US and world economies towards low carbon, renewable fueled economies. Some examples of that leadership, US wind energy, we're the number one wind energy producer in the world. We also, wind energy in the United States, was the number one addition to the grid, more than any other source of electricity. And 2015 was one of our biggest years ever. With that kind of growth, it's not surprising that when, in 2015, the Department of Labor did a survey. What are the fastest growing professions in this country? They looked at healthcare. They looked at software developers. No. The fastest growing profession in this country, win turbine technician. So that is why, that is why our theme for this year's wind power is generation wind. Wind is the clean energy source for our generation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our time, this is our generation, generation wind. Now, this progress, that enabled us to get a five-year runway of a really strong market to 2020 didn't just happen. We made it happen, and we're gonna keep making it happen. It was built on your work and many of our partner organizations' work over 2015, and I wanna share with you some of the examples of what we did get done that have created this strong five-year market and then some for us. First of all, we did get that five-year extension of the PTC, a phase down, and we got strong guidance from the IRS. We got strong RPSs in California, in Oregon, in Maryland. We helped strengthen the clean power plant, so when that stay is lifted, we're gonna get an additional 50 to 100 gigawatts of wind. We published best practices to reduce bat take. And because we got ahead of the curve in doing that, we are able to avoid significant additional regulation. We advanced new transmission projects and improved transmission on the grid. We launched a monthly webinar series for our operations, maintenance, and safety sector of our industry and are providing more support to OMS. We updated our WIA website and we are launching a new version of Market Database Pro all to better engage and inform and support you. So first thing I actually want to do is to thank all of you for your partnership and your work this last year that has enabled those successes so that we have a strong outlook to 2020 and beyond. Please give yourselves another round of applause for your success and hard work in 2015. Now, while our, in, our industry has a really strong outlook to 2020, there is more that we must do to ensure that that momentum continues to 2030 and well beyond. 
The board has approved a five-year strategic plan that has five strategic imperatives to ensure our success well beyond 2020. First, we need to reduce winds, we need to continue reducing winds, levelized cost of energy, most importantly that. Second, we need to increase state demand for wind energy. Third, we need to overcome a number of implementation challenges that we have, including transmission and siding. Fourth, we need to improve the operations and maintenance of our existing assets. And fifth, we need to keep WINS brand strong. We must accomplish those five imperatives the next five years so that we can keep our momentum going. And in a few minutes, Chris Brown's gonna come onto this stage and talk about a number of things, including the levelized cost of energy and how we need to and are going to keep that coming down. But in my remaining few minutes, I don't wanna go into further details about these five imperatives. I'm hoping you've got them memorized already. I'm not gonna spend more time on them, but what I do wanna do is talk about how we're gonna implement them. And to do that, I would like to share a story. My AWEA colleagues and I continue to travel the country to support and help you. And on one of those trips, we got to know the Wilson family. And I spent a fair amount of time talking with Richard Wilson. Richard is the gentleman with the white plaid shirt. He's the current owner and manager for the family of their 6,000 acre farm east of Colorado Springs where they grow hay. They've had it in the family since 1948. Four generations have been farming that land. But over the last couple years, he explained to me, they've had to sell off parcel after parcel after parcel of that land to make ends meet for their farm financially. But then this last year, they had the chance to lease some land to Next Era that put up 36 turbines on their farm and they're now able to financially sustain themselves. And he talked about how he is now able to pass that farm off to his two sons and they're not gonna have to keep selling off the land to financially sustain themselves on that farm. But as I talked further with him, it became clear actually, they would be financially better off if they did sell the farm. If they did sell it parcel by parcel and put all that money in the bank and earned interest on that money, they would be financially better off going that route. But he and his two sons did not want to do that. They wanted to live on the land. They wanted to continue their tradition. They wanted to continue their story of farming on that land. So Richard Wilson's story isn't really about the money. It's really not about the money. His story is about wind energy and how it's enabling his family, generation after generation after generation, to do what they want to do, and that is to farm their land. The theme for Generation Wind, the theme for this conference is Generation Wind, but Richard Wilson taught me it's not just about this generation. It's about this generation and all future generations and what wind energy does to enable those future generations to pursue their passions. As a father as well, I can think of few things more important than enabling your children to be able to pursue their passions for years and years to come. But my story actually doesn't end with Richard Wilson. Over the last couple months, we've gotten to know a wonderful photographer, Ed Collier, who is traveling in the country to take pictures of you, to take pictures of the men and women of the wind industry. Please take a moment to look at a couple of his photos. We learned from Richard Wilson that wind energy is about this and future generations. And I guarantee you that each and every one of these men and women in these photos has similarly important, personal, hopeful, passionate stories about why they too love this industry and how this industry is taking care of them and will take care of their children. They have wonderful stories, I guarantee it, and I guarantee you that you as well, everybody in this room 
has an extraordinary story about what wind energy is doing for you and for your family. Now, I do spend a lot of time running around the country talking about how wind energy is the biggest and the fastest and the cheapest source of carbon reductions and how we save $7.3 billion each year in public health care costs and how in 2015 we grew the employment of this industry 20% and those factoids are great. However, people don't really remember them. What they do remember are personal stories. People remember stories about what this industry is doing for you and your family and your children and this planet. When you entered the hall this morning, you should have received, among other things, this card. I would ask you, at some point this morning, to take this card and take a pen and circle these items on the card that you will do to share your story. And it's easy, because nobody can tell your story as well as you can tell your story about why you love wind energy. In closing, through our hard work this past year, we now have a strong market outlook to 2020, and we want to keep that momentum going to 2030 and beyond. To do that, we need all 88,000 employees in this industry to tell their stories, to tell their stories in the communities that host our projects, to tell their stories to political leaders, to tell their stories to young people throughout the country. Ladies and gentlemen, this coming year, I look forward to working with you, I look forward to partnering and supporting you, and I look forward to hearing your personal win story. Thank you very much.